Hey everybody, Sightsaber here, and today I'm bringing you a video dedicated to shift registers. So, what's a shift register, you may ask? It's simply a series of registers, or flip-flops, that are linked together. And when, a, when it receives a pulse, the data travels from one register into another, and it, this continues on in a chain. This design that you see before you is a linear feedback shift register. So once the data gets to the end of the line, it loops back to the start and it continues on from there. These red sections are our inputs. We can also use them as an output if, we, if you really want to as well. I've put buttons on here so you can manually select them. This purple block here is my reset. I've set it so it automatically sets the very first register to a 1 or an on uh, upon reset. I can get rid of that by, uh, well, I'd have to move that out, but I've made it like this um, because I'm actually using this register for a, a counter, which you'll see later on. So the way that this register works is it relies on a sort of tried and tested method for storing data in a sort of RAM design, which is essentially locking out, well, permanently turning on a repeater via a feedback loop. So the repeater's powering this block, which then goes back up to here, which then the repeater um, gets its signal from. Now to obviously turn this off, or in my case, to shift it along, we have our input here. I have this tied to a clock, or if you want, just a single pulse, you can press the button and that'll give you a a single shift. So we, now that we've noticed the L set bit has moved on to the next one, so what happens is when that block goes down, it turns this one off, it breaks the loop, then the next one along, um, well, so this was here previously and now it's moved on to the next section. So what that does is it continues down there and then loops up to here waiting for a signal to travel on. So when we press our button here it enables the well it enables the signal from the repeater to travel through the block. It powers this block and the block underneath as well and permanently sets the repeater on. So, if we turn the clock on, we can see how this works. And then it loops back to the start again. Now, you're not limited to just the single one being on. Um, if you connect it up to a control board and you can write to it via whatever control method you've described, so we just set a few more of these bits out and it will continue to shift all of these bits. And that's the basics of the shift register. Now where this is useful is what I've sort of used it for is a, a counter. So I've changed this slightly, and I've applied it to a, a clock, if you will. So currently my clock is reading at 11.56, and I'm going to show you that it loops back properly. I'll manually increment the time here. And now we'll see it loop back to zero time or midnight. And it continues on again. So essentially, this is just a, a whole series of linear feedback shift registers 10 bits, 6 bits, and well, 3 bits down here. With some logic attached down here, so it loops back from 24 instead of going from 
uh, instead of continuing to 24, 25, 26 and so on. It's not just limited to a clock, you could use this for a scoreboard with two teams versing each other to keep track of the points or rounds or whatever you will. And I have this hooked up in a way that when it goes from a 9 back to a 0, it continues and acts as the impulse or the clock source for the next set of registers. So when this goes to a 9, it turns this torch off and it also requires a clock impulse from here to turn this torch off which will then trigger our next impulse. Otherwise, if we didn't have this clock impulse as well, as soon as you'd get to a 9, it would trigger, which is too early, and if you just have the clock impulse, um, well then you're going to be triggering every single time this one's triggering as well. So that's the way that I get around the sequential logic for connecting the next highest bit up. So I have this design set up like this because I require it for my seven segment display on top. Otherwise you could sort of cut out this whole section and make it slightly less wide. So that continues from there and goes to this decoder here. It's a very simple decoder. It's also a... you could change it to display anything you can on a seven segment display. So you can display quite a few letters as well. So instead of a scoreboard or a clock like I've made, you could have a whole bunch of letters and you could have this clock connected to all of them so it scrolls a message across the whole screen. That's just another use that you could use for it. Uh, the way that these decoders work is we have a signal and it travels to each of these lines. The bottom three, the middle one, and the top three. And what it does is it turns, uh, we can't see from this one, go to the top one. So when, a, when one of these is on, it turns the required torch off, which then turns on the torch lines here, which correspond to a panel or a three section on the seven segment display. It's just a very simple decoder and very simple to change all the values around. There's more compact designs around, but I like using this one because it's just easy to change anything at will. And everything has a, a set time that it'll go off at. And that covers up the shift registers for use as a counting device.